Good evening. Welcome to Photo Talk Plus, episode 13. All right, great. We have got an exciting show tonight. Uh, a special interview with the one and only Robert Scoble. Everybody, uh, Robert, how are you? Pretty good. Good. And we've got a, a great group of panelists tonight. Uh, as always, my co-host Lotus Carroll is here. Lotus, you want to introduce introduce the crew tonight? Yes, I will. I'm going to start off, and when I say your name, just let people know a little bit where they can find you online and who you are. We'll start off with Don McCaskill. Hey, I'm the uh, founder, CEO, and chief geek at Smug Mug, and today we're pretty excited because we launched our second product, Camera Awesome, and uh, you can find me uh, just about anywhere, don.smugmug.com, twitter.com, slash Don McCaskill, Google+, Plus, you name it. I use my real name pretty much everywhere. Cool. Well, thank you for being here tonight with us. We're excited to talk right. about the app. I, yeah. I, like, I like that sweatshirt, Don. Thanks. It's, uh, it's got my title on it. Oh, it does it? Uh, One of these? You get it up there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Rare. I like you're, that. you're part of the elite club. All right. I like that. It's a, this is the, this, I think this is the best sweatshirt I've ever owned. It's really comfortable. Yeah, it's a really nice one, isn't it? Yeah. So who else have we got, Lotus? We have Natalie Villalobos. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie, and I'm a community manager on Google+. And I'm looking forward to uh, actually attending an upcoming photo walk with Lotus in Austin, where I will be shooting exclusively with my Android Zoom tablet. Oh, sweet. Oh. And you did, you did so good. Walk. At the last photo walk, didn't you just use your phone? Yep, I'm gonna to try to only use Android devices. That's so cool. Like we've heard that. of that. We've heard of that site, Google Plus, Natalie. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it is. Isn't that the? Right is that the ghost town? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's where the party's at. <laughs> right. right. Uh -huh. So, so uh, welcome, Natalie. Okay. Up okay. next, we have Keith. Uh, Let's, what, let's leave Keith for the end. He's a special one. Let's do Karen Hutton. <laughs> Thank you. He's a special one, all right. I'll tell you what. I'm, <laughs> I'm Karen Hutton. I do voiceovers professionally. You can find me there for that function at KarenHutton.com. I do the voice for Stuck on Earth, the app, and for MotionX GPS Drive for the iPhone. I also do photography. I'm at KarenHuttonPhotography.com and here at Google+, and I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> Your voice sounds so awesome. Isn't <laughs> that great? By the way, every time I get into an elevator now, I, I swear it's you. <laughs> Only in Las Vegas. <laughs> I, I think it's more <laughs> than just Vegas, but uh, I, I definitely heard your voice in Vegas. That's hilarious. And, and Karen, you, you have your own show as well, isn't that right? Yes, Thomas. Thank you for reminding me. I get all flustered yeah. sometimes. I also do a show here on Google Plus called Life Through the Lens, and it's a fantastic show every other Tuesday, and it'll be up again in two weeks. I hope you join us. <laughs> Great show. Awesome. All right, up next we have Gordon Lang. Hi Lotus, hi Thomas, hi everyone. Thanks for having me on the show. My first time on your show. Have yeah, I offended you? you? Why is it taking so long? We'll find out in the next 60 minutes why. <laughs> um, my, uh, my job, I'm the editor of CameraLabs.com. I, well, I can be any title I want because it's, uh, I'm the only one who works, so it's my site. Uh, where I review digital cameras, lenses and accessories. I've just published a review of the Sony NEX7. And uh, I'm not letting Robert put me off with uh, whatever he's uh, showing on uh, his screen. This is the Canon G1X, which I'm also reviewing at the moment. I've got loads of sample images from this camera, which is pretty exciting. If you're interested in that, check it out. I'm at CameraLabs.com. Sweet. Thank you so much, Gordon. Oh, and now the special you. one, Keith Barrett, who's <laughs> broadcasting us on VidCast Network. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I'm Keith Barrett. I'm a technology guy over at Disney and uh, a big longtime Linux guy and the founder and operator of VidCastNetwork.com <laughs> and uh, Google Plus Hangout Addict. Keith rocks. Keith rocks. He does. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Keith. Keith does a lot of them. Thank you, Keith, indeed. Well, we've got a great show tonight. There has been a lot of terrific technology coming out this week. I think tonight, it's great that we have Scoble on because it's a particularly a technology-oriented show tonight. And uh, the first story that we're going to start with is uh, a pretty cool new iPhone app. And fortunately, we have Don McCaskill here to talk about it as well. 
And uh, I got to play around with it a little bit tonight, and, and it's the best phone camera app I've ever seen. It certainly beats anything uh, I've got on Android. I liked it a lot better than Vignette, and I liked it better than the iPhone stuff I've played with, but is uh, Camera Awesome. Right, Don? Yeah. yeah, we're excited. And, uh, today and we today. love Android. It's coming for Android. I'm sorry that it's not here yet. We love Android. We're working hard. Uh, it just turns out that it's a little, okay, a lot more difficult to write a camera app for Android than it is for iOS. But what, and why is that, Don? Uh, so two big reasons, the first of which is that there's a lot wider range of hardware. So trying to target a, a stable hardware platform is really, really hard. So we're not going to be able to support every device. We're going to have to draw a line in the sand and go, okay, these devices are advanced enough or have a large enough market penetration or whatever that will spend the effort to support it. And then the other one is we run into some pretty serious memory limitations where we can't take huge multi-gigapixel images into RAM and do interesting things with them without the uh, OS killing us. So uh, we are working hard on both of those problems. Now, is it is the Android, is this months away still, I'm assuming? Uh, you know, uh, I better not speculate because I was sure Camera Awesome would ship long before it actually did on iOS. Uh, right. So just like Camera Awesome, we're committed to getting it right first and then uh, shipping it. So we will take as long as we need to get it just right. So it's amazing that it's just as amazing, if not more so, on Android as it is on iOS. So, so, Don, on the iPhone, it seems like apps are in two different buckets. One are really funny, you know, almost teenage-oriented apps, which are mostly about making your, your photos really weird colors or adding bling-bling or adding some funny saying or doing something crazy to them. And then there's the serious iPhoneography apps like Camera Plus and Camera Awesome. Um, I, I know how Camera Awesome compares to Camera Plus, but I'd like to hear what you think of the high-end and, and is there space for another camera app? I know you'll say yes, but... Uh. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think there's always space for more stuff. I hope, I hope we're not the last great uh, camera app to come out, and I hope the other camera apps continue to improve their game, too. I think... I, think, I mean, so we, we used to get asked this question about Flickr versus SmugMug all the time, and my answer then and now is the world's a better place with competition, with choice, with with innovation, um, and uh, and I'm a photographer and a technologist first, and a CEO second. I this stuff this stuff is exciting for me. I love it when I see other people do great things. So um, we I think our app is awesome, obviously, um, and uh, um, but I can't tell you exactly how it compares to something like Camera Plus um, because. We didn't build it by going and looking at what was there and sort of coming up with a checklist of things we needed to have. We started with a what will make the best customer experience from our point of view, and our point of view is not everybody's point of view, but it is our point of view, and we, we worked on it from there. So I think it's amazing, um, but I am pretty biased. I just posted a picture of Gordon Lang's dinner on my stream, taking with that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry for eating that. No one likes to watch other people eating, so sorry about that. And, and no, it, you, it was it was like food porn. It was gorgeous. You kidding? <laughs> Look, that you was a ripper cup of yeah, baked chicken curry. I can highly recommend making it. So, <laughs> so some of the things, Don, that I I noticed about the app is it starts up a little faster than your competition, and it also um, has more professional level stuff, like there's a lot more filters for black and white, for instance. You can have a little blue tint, a little orange tint, a little this, a little that. Why did you do so many filters? Because that, that seems overwhelming, and plus you have this weird model where you have to, you get some filters for free, and then you have to buy filters as you use them and stuff like that. Tell, yeah, tell me so about your philosophy on the filters and where you're going to go from that. Uh, so the business model was an afterthought. Um, we uh, we, we knew we wanted it to be free, and we knew that we couldn't just throw money down the drain, so we decided to roll the dice and try in-app purchasing. We probably have a lot to learn there. Uh, it will probably adjust a little bit as we sort of uh, talk to people and see how it, how it pans out and whether we're on, on the right price track or not. Um, 
but we did feel that it was really important to offer a wide range of choice um, because we want it to appeal to all photographers. We don't want it to just appeal to soccer moms, but we do want it to appeal to soccer moms. We want it to appeal to wedding photographers, still life, landscape, you name it. And uh, so as we watched those photographers play with the app and use it and everything, we noticed that you know, the soccer moms buy the portrait presets immediately and they just stick with those and, and they shoot their kids and, and the photos look amazing. But that's not exactly what the landscape photographers are looking for. So we felt like we had to offer a pretty wide range um, just so that we could cover all of the photography bases. Robert, you've been uh, what do you think this is going to be? Yeah, my audio was, uh, your audio is lagging, and I'm not sure if anybody's hearing me. I hear you. I can hear you, but you're out of sync. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm always out of sync, so I'll just keep talking, and hopefully <laughs> it catches up or something. <laughs> Great. Actually, it's um, done. Yeah, Thomas, you were talking about that, my shooting experience with it. I, I like it. It, it. it lets me take images very, very qu quickly, which is mostly what I want to do. I don't, I'm not a big filter guy other than I, I like to play that I'm Trey, Trey Ratcliffe or Thomas Hawkins huh. while and turn an image black and white or, or add a little bit of a warm tone or something like that. But I do like the weird, the weird stuff. I, I like to make my images look really crazy, you know, sometimes... Uh, you know, uh, high schoolish <laughs> on one side, but I, on the other side, I like to be very social. This I took to Instagram when it was only 80 users, right? And I saw that it was very cool for me because all, all my friends were on, and we were very social with these pictures. We were, you know, we would post a picture up, and then bam, 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 we would see a lot of comments and likes come in, and I missed that with these pro level or you know more high end apps. I really want the the social piece. I'm wondering where you guys are going to take it over the next year. Are you going to head more toward the social, or are you going to just aim at the uh, the traditional smug mug wedding photographer who wants a really really great app? Uh, so so I I think we can do both and more. Um, uh, I would have built oh, Instagram and Path into the app one. from day one if I could have, um, but the. Uh, the Instagram API very clearly doesn't have uploading. Path doesn't have uploading. Like, I can't integrate with those APIs. Um, and in fact, I begged, begged on my knees, I begged Google Plus to let us put Google Plus in the app. And no dice there either. So, A, I'm dying to add more services. Uh, B, if we can't add more services, then we're going to find a way to route around it. Because I want to be social. I want what you just described. Um, and so we're going to figure something out. Um, but we knew that first and foremost we needed to be able to take photos and make them look amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's what version one is. Um, and of course tons and tons and tons of people aren't like you and I. Their friends and family are on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And so we wanted to interact and integrate with the low hanging fruit first before we figure the rest of it out. So. Yes, I want to be more social. Yes, I want to have lots more effects and filters and editing capabilities. Yes, I want more of everything. Um, we, think, we think we have, and I can think of at least five to ten years worth of stuff we'd like to see go into this app. So this is the very beginning. Yeah, one of the comments on my on my uh, Google Plus post about your camera was the editing really isn't up to par with like Snapseed, and uh, I had to go back and look at Snapseed, and he's absolutely right. Editing photos on Snapseed or other apps is much much nicer. It's it's designed for that, and I'm wondering where you're going to take it, the editing part because you have so many filters and they're hard to see what the effect is until you get it on a bigger screen and you can actually look at the photo. Uh, we have all kinds of great ideas around how to improve the editing stuff. Um, we have we have we have lots of things in the works. Okay, well, Thomas, well, we, what do you think? Uh, you know, I like it. It's the best camera phone uh, camera I've ever shot with. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm an Android guy, so I want Don to hurry up and get it on the Nexus. But uh, uh, you know, I want that uh, too. 
Yeah, we both do. So I do have just a short video here that we saw on it online on YouTube so people could get a little bit more of an idea what it's about. I, I like this video a lot. So I'm going to run this real quick, guys. It's uh, uh, just a little over a minute, and uh, people can check it out. With camera awesome? Do you, you can do, like, pop-up video voiceover? And you can share them in all your favorite ways. It's so simple. It's grandma approved. And yet, even expensive cameras don't have many of its features, like a level for the horizon, or the ability to focus in one place and set exposure in another. It's so fast, it can catch nine fleeting moments per second. The real magic begins with the Awesomeize button. One tap makes your photos come alive with vibrant color. Use gorgeous special effects to make ordinary photos look like they were taken by famous photographers. There's no limit to the ways you can make your friends look retro, glamorous, or cool. In video mode, you don't have to be recording for camera often to catch the moment. When you tap the record button, it can capture the previous five seconds, like a magic time machine. Camera Awesome does the unfun job, so you don't have to, like auto-archiving to the cloud. And it can automatically apply your favorite effects and post your photos online as you shoot them. One simple free app does it all. Okay, so there, there's a oh, little man, teaser video for it. Uh, I do have to say, Don, it, it felt an awful lot. Yeah, it felt a little bit like a uh, Apple lab to me there, you know. Hey, that's uh, that's about the highest form of compliment you can pay me, so I'll yeah. take it. Thanks. It was. I th I thought I thought it was great, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to Nexus. I I just played around with it on my wife's iPhone, and you know it has more filters than I've seen on anything, textures, frames, everything you could want. So it uh, certainly shows that mobile uh, photography is getting better and better. And I, I really do think that this is just the beginning. I mean, this is, we worked really hard on it to get it to this point, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think, I think the future of photography is, is uh, rich software that's connected like this um, to both online services on one side and uh, neat hardware on the other. Yeah, hey, Don, did, or Thomas, Don and Thomas, did you see the uh, new Nokia phone? I'm sure you saw the new Nokia phone with a 41 megapixel sensor. Yeah and the image quality that's coming off of that thing. Now, it, it's very experimental. It's in Symbian. It's not in Windows Phone. But, Don, you told me you were thinking of supporting Windows Phone as, in addition to Android. Is that, are, you, are you really thinking about that? I, I am really thinking about that, yeah. I mean, I, I realize it hasn't exactly set the world on fire, um, but I really do like the Metro UI. And like I said before, I, I think competition in the market is great. Um, so... So yeah, I would love to support Windows Phone also, um, and and I think the 41 megapixel thing is a really neat innovation. Uh, I can't wait to play with one, um, uh, but I think it's I think it's an interesting solution to the problem of not being able to bolt on a telephoto lens to your cell phone. Um, so it may not be the answer, but I think it's a step or maybe a leap in the right direction. Yeah, it's clear in the next 18 months we're going to see innovation in cameras, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, Don, Anna, Anna Wynn in the chat room wants to know if it's for, out for the iPad as well. Uh, so it does work on the iPad, but it's in, like, iPhone compatibility mode. Obviously, okay. we don't want to uh, keep it in iPhone compatibility mode, so it's coming. Stay tuned. I I have a feeling, Don, that you're going to have a lot of announcements shortly after the iPad 3 ships because... The, dis the display, uh, the rumors are the display on that thing is twice as sharp as currently we have. And the camera is, supposed, is rumored to be an 8 megapixel camera. Mm -hmm. So people are going to shoot pictures on the iPad <coughs> in a way that they haven't yet done. And they're certainly going to edit pictures on the iPad. I, I think that's going to be a, a really great display surface for editing and moving through pictures and, and you know, deleting blurry ones and stuff like that. Wouldn't that be amazing if both of those things were true? Um, uh, bring it on. I can't I wait. read it on the internet, so you never know. It must be true if it's on the internet. <laughs> right. Well, I also see, uh, Natalie, you have a friend joining us here now, too, don't you, there? 
I do. I'd like to introduce a developer oh, yeah. advocate for Google Plus and my favorite playmate and boyfriend, Timothy Jordan. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Hi, y'all. Hey, Timothy. Hi, Timothy. I'm, I'm just hey, popping Timothy. in for a few minutes. Awesome uh, launch, guys. We're glad really cool. Yeah, thank you. It, it, uh, you know, I, I have a feeling that this is going to be the most downloaded uh, camera app on the iPhone ever. I mean, it's that good. Well, we, uh, we are currently number three all, a free app, whatever that means, I don't know over what time frame, in the App Store right now, uh, above all the other camera apps, above any app other than two games. Competing with games is tough. Yeah. And we've, uh, today we're beating all of them but two, so yeah. we're off to a good start. I think that's yeah. a really good prediction, Thomas. Yeah. I think you know we can we can mark the day today where we're making that prediction that it's going to be the best and the biggest. Well, to do that, you have to get featured, and I'm working on that. But um, God knows, you know, nobody knows how Apple picks who is going to get featured, and uh, I certainly should, don't. But, well, they won't tell me. But they did ask the, the first question that, that the team asked was, "Are they going to ship on Android?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so really? Well, maybe uh, maybe somebody from Apple should uh, talk to me about that. We can we'll see. We have cool. Hey, Don. I, <laughs> uh, I think I finally have some negotiating leverage. Google Plus <laughs> keeps telling me no, I can't publish to Google Plus. Apple is asking me whether it's coming to Android. I'd say the ball's in Google Plus's court. What do you think there? <laughs> 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 well, Google Google Plus is going to have an API out uh, at some point, right, Timothy? Yeah. <laughs> we, we are always working to release more Google Plus platform features. Oh, right. you're so well media trained by Victor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can tell you we have a ton of users today who would love to yeah. publish right to their stream instead of publishing to Picasa and having to open up Google Plus and move it into their stream. Which well, actually, you know, Don, we, we know that experience can be better. Yeah. yeah. Don, if you have the uh, Google Plus app running, uh, it automatically uploads into Picasa, and then all you have to do is uh, go and click on the photos and share them. That's how I shared my photos, and uh, it, it's it's one step too many. I think it's, you're right. You, it you is one step it. too many. Yeah. But I can't wait till it uh, automatically uploads right from Camera Plus and and lets me share right from Camera Plus. Same That'll thing be, from SmugMug too. It's been like this huge requested feature since Google Plus launched. We have, I mean, you've seen yeah. photography explode on Google Plus. They want to publish right from SmugMug, not just a link. They want to stick the actual photo on Google Plus, and we want to let that happen. It's not just you. I, you know, I've, I've talked to so many startups who want to be able to push stuff into Google Plus and publish it from their apps, and, and they're waiting for the, that API. Anyways, it's a great, great launch, man. Hey, hey, Gordon, have you played around with much of the camera phone stuff? Yeah, I mean, like you, Thomas, I'm an Android phone user. I've got, I'm a multi-platform user. I wanted to say to Don, I don't really, as a stuffy Brit, want to encourage anyone to come up with a word like awesomeize, but I downloaded yeah. the app uh, last night on, uh, on my iPad, and even on the kind of emulation mode or scaling it up or having it a little window, I really enjoyed using it, and I was very skeptical because I don't normally like those sort of apps, but I really enjoyed using it, and... Um, was I right, Don, in seeing that there's a time lapse feature in it as well? Uh, so there is. Um, so it, we don't actually like make a time lapse video, um, but we do uh, let you basically set an interval, and you can take the the photos and then make a time lapse video on your own later. You can yeah, imagine like that, that, that might be a feature that's coming, maybe. All right. <laughs> well, it's nice to just do it with the video and be able to do it. Take your own stills into something like Photoshop Extended and then make your time lapse yourself from that because I like to do that with a high resolution image and you know you can crop a certain area of it. So yeah, yeah, I was skeptical, but I, I like what I see so far. Nice work. Fabulous, thanks. Well, that we could talk about this this uh, camera app all night, I'm sure, but we do have a few other things we got to get to. So. Uh, Check it out. Uh, what do they do? Search for Camera Awesome in the uh, store, right, Don? Yeah, enough chatting. Go go search for Camera Awesome. It's free. <laughs> what do you have to lose? Yeah, it is. It's free. That is nice. So there was another camera that came out today, Robert, and I know you've been testing it. Uh, yeah. The Lytro. Yeah, and I'm showing one of the images I shot with it today that lets you refocus the image after you take the picture. That's pretty so, crazy image. Unlike with the iPhone, if it <laughs> if the phone focused on the wrong thing, 
then you're screwed when you get home, you know, if your focus isn't quite quite sharp. But here you can actually just refocus on the image that uh, you care about, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Plus, this capture, this new camera, and I don't have mine with me. I forgot it. I think, Thomas, you have one I've with got, you, right? I've got one right here. This is what yeah. it looks like. This one's in blue, so it's, uh, you know, it's about this, a little bit bigger than, like, a big stick of butter. Yeah, and so what, what this thing does is capture the entire, what they call the light field. <laughs> so instead of just capturing uh, photons from uh, my face and going into the camera and hitting a two-dimensional sensor, and that's it, that, that's the image you get, it actually captures all the uh, rays in this area and bends them through a little uh, uh, lens array, in, and it, the light hits different pixels. And by turning on and off those pixels in computer software, you can change the focus, you can do 3D photography with a single lens, which is pretty interesting, and you can do a parallax, which makes you look like you're moving around the subject a little bit like this. And, uh, and it's pretty cool stuff, really cool, because uh, it's only possible now because of the computer programming, the, the processing power that we have now on our desktops and in these cameras to do this switching of pixels and switching of uh, the image properties itself. And it's, uh, I think that's what's really cool about this. It pushes photography forward. It might not be a camera for every photographer. In fact, I, I wrote on my review, it's probably not for very many of us yet because the images aren't quite sharp and they're in low light. It's really pretty brutal to take a good image in a low light with this thing. And, um, you know, it's not for everybody. You have to carry it around. It's not a cell phone. I mean, I, the nice thing about Camera Awesome is you always have your cell phone with you, so you always have that Camera Awesome. The Lytro, you have to carry around. I forgot mine today. You know? Yeah. It's, well, that, it, that's, a, that's a really important point because the thing is if you are going to carry another camera with you, it needs to be quite a flexible camera. And I think the Lytro, because it's not great in low light, the images look quite electronic, it's kind of quite... It feels quite specialized as a camera, and, and again, you, don't, you can't squeeze it into a pocket that easily. And you, know, you could have made this argument about Polaroid pictures back in the 90s, 80s and 90s. I used to sell these high-end you know, Hasselblad and Nikon cameras, and they took much better pictures than a Polaroid did, but a Polaroid did one thing, which was instant photography, and, and people bought those in great, great quantities, even though the images weren't as good a quality as a Hasselblad or a Nikon. Um, and I think this camera is in the same range. It, it's, a, it's more of a niche right now. It'll be interesting to see uh, if it goes beyond a niche and how deeply it goes beyond the niche. Does, does it feel a little expensive, it, too, Robert? What's does that? It, does it feel a little expensive on the pricing on it? Yeah, you know, when you start thinking of $400 for a camera, you know, the new iPad 3 probably is going to be about $500. This is not something that, you know, is for a family that's... Uh, you know, struggling to meet, make ends meet. This is for a rich guy or, or somebody who really is in the photography and is looking for yet another tool in the tool bag to do a very specific uh, kind of photo. And you can see several of the examples on my images that I posted today. If you get really close to the image and you have something in, in the distance, it's great. It, it makes these really cool images and everybody's amazed when you show them that they can refocus. But it's not, it's not good for other things. It's not good for sports, for instance. This thing, uh, the shutter speed, the max shutter speed is 1 250th of a second. So if you try to capture something moving, like I, I was, uh, my wife was driving and I was shooting a Harley Davidson next to us on the road, and all those images are blurred. Some are blurred actually pretty nicely, but it also didn't have that refocus ability. And so I didn't even post those images because they just... They didn't match what, what this camera's good at. It, it, you know, it, it would be better to shoot that on an iPhone because your images would have been sharper. Um, and certainly you would have, if you shot that with like a 5D or a, a Nikon 800, you would have gotten a much better control of the image and, and it's a much better tool for that kind of thing. This is not competitive with those cameras, but it, it's more like a Polaroid versus a Nikon. It, it's good for but, one but or two things. This is one of the big problems though, isn't it? It's not just yeah. a case of what camera do you carry around with you or how many cameras do you carry with you, but yeah. what camera, th the fact that most of us can only take 
one picture at a time. Yep. So you actually have to choose a camera for a certain event, your kid blowing out the birthday candles, the space shuttle taking off. You know, the celebrity you, you didn't expect just sat down next to you in a restaurant. You're going to pull out a camera. Which one are you going to use? Yeah. And, you know, is it going to be the Lytro if that's the one you've got with you? And if it's not, then why do you have it with you? That, yeah. I think that's one of the bigger... And, and also the other problem is that if you're not an American with a Macintosh, you can't buy it anyway. Uh, yeah, I think that problem will get fixed pretty soon, but still, you, you're right. You're right. I, you know, it's um, we're still learning what this is for, and I and I still don't have a good sense when I'm going to pull this out instead of my iPhone mm. or my my Canon 5D. Um, certainly, it, it, it does have some intriguing uh, shooting properties. It's fun to shoot with this thing because you don't have to worry about focus. You you can just aim at a at bracket, and take a picture, and ah, See like that, and you don't have to worry about your focus. With a 5D, if you didn't get the focus on, you lost that moment, and there's no way to get that moment back. And and this is a lot of fun. I mean, I, you saw the picture of me, my kid making a face. I might have missed that with a Canon 5D. I might have missed that even with Camera Awesome, right? The the iPhone might have been focusing in and out, or I would have had to wait the two seconds for it to to come up, or you know, the focus just might not have been perfect. And I might have missed that, that moment. So for me, photography is about capturing moments, and this lets me capture new ones in, in a wholly new way. Was anybody intrigued by Trey's comments a couple of hours ago? He posted on Google Plus that I think he knew that we were going to be talking about it. Maybe he wanted to jump in there and say, hey, guys, you know, if you think it sucks, watch out, because I've discovered this brand new thing you can do with it, but I'm not going to tell what any, any of you what it is. Well, I, what I, I know. I, I know. I'm, I'm not quite sure what he's hinting at, but I know he's really excited by this parallax. Mm. And yeah. this, is a, yeah. this is something that is interesting about this camera. It's the beginning of a new age in photography technology, and the images are going to be able to be reprocessed to do more things in the future. So, like today, we can't do this parallax trick. They've shown it to me. And I know it's coming, but I can't do it. But the same images I shot last weekend are going to be able to do the parallax image. And then when the 3D technology comes out and they, they do 3D photography, my same images I already shot are going to do 3D as well. And they're going to have other capabilities in the future that are going to let us do new kinds of images. And that's exciting to me. I, you know, and, and maybe this isn't the camera that captures your interest because it's not quite sharp enough or, or flexible enough, it, it doesn't feel good enough, but this if, if this, if this company sticks around and this technology sticks around for let's say five years, think about how much better those sensors are getting, how much better those little micro lenses are getting, how much better the camera will be, and I'm sure they're going to fix the low light and all that stuff. You take it five, ten years from now, and this is probably going to be something that's in a lot of different cameras, this technology. And so I'm really excited. I, it, remember when digital photography first started? I, I remember getting my first Apple Quick Take, which was about the same price, by the way. It's about 500 bucks, And it did 640 by 480, 16 shades of gray, yeah. right? You needed a and, suitcase for it. Well, it was big. It was, it was bigger <laughs> than the Lytro, but it was big. And you could only store, I don't know how many images on it. You could... I stored, uh, by the way, on one card. I, I didn't even run out, and, and I ran out of battery of 677 images. I was uh, one day shooting on, on one battery. Um, so, you, you know, this thing is so much further along than the first digital cameras that I got in '94. That, you know, I, I'm not too worried about today uh, on this camera. I, I think this is going to be really exciting and three, four, five, ten years, and we underestimate what, what technology does in hardware in that time frame. Well, I do think, I do think it is the beginning, and uh, it's you know, sort of the first generation of this technology. Uh, my first digital camera was a Sony Mavica. You put floppy disks. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that was one exactly. of the competitors of that quick take that I got, you know? Yeah, and that was... Yeah. We should go back to floppy disks. Yeah, I, actually, I got that from <laughs> totally. high school graduation in 2001, and I used to go to like nightclubs and raves and shoot with floppy disks, and it was, it was pretty unreal. I mean, yeah. you, know, you know, my other hobby is, is video cameras, right? I just bought this $3,200 3D Panasonic camera with two, two 1080p sensors, uh, three 
three chips in each sensor, so six six chips in the set thing. It's a it's a beautiful camera. It does XLR, microphone, audio, and all all that fun stuff. And think about what Lytro could do with that technology. You know, what what if Lytro got into something like this and the processing improved another fact five factors so that they could do video like this and you could just click on a live Google Hangout and refocus on something wild a video is playing. Take that you know, 5, 10, 15 years and this is pretty mind blowing. Yeah. By the way, speaking of, I wish I had a light show right now because I want to be able to zoom in on that sign that that dude just put behind you, Scobo. What, what, is, what is this new sign right here? <laughs> what, what's that? I don't know. We have a bunch of hue art. I put that up because when people are sitting here and I'm shooting this way, there's just a big blank wall. Uh, so I want to cover it up a little bit. Yeah, that's Rocky, my producer, by the way. Honey. Now, yeah. now uh, Robert, that's your new camera you're using full time. He's drinking. <laughs> yeah, he's drinking my <laughs> drinking whiskey because I got to drive home. So. <laughs> yeah, this is a new Panasonic. It just came out a couple months ago. I saw it at the Consumer Electronics Show. And it has a 3D, um, a glasses-less 3D uh, display, which you can't show up here because you guys can't see it. And um, it's pretty nice. It's it's a nice camera. It's, it takes good 2D images. It does 1080p. I mean, CNN would take video off this no problem. Yeah, and from, I think from, our, from our view, it looks actually a little bit like Wally with those two. <laughs> guys, you know, it, you know I, that's one. That's one reason I did it. I bought it because it causes conversations, and I like to be. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like to have different equipment than everybody else's. You know, at, at the World Economic Forum, I was the only photo videographer with a 3D camera. Every and the whole world's press was there: CNN, MSNBC, I, you know, BBC, all that stuff. They don't use 3D yet. They're ignoring this uh, the 3D world for a whole lot of reasons. Um, and so I'm playing with it. And if somebody needs 3D video done, I'll have the camera, right? <laughs> Wasn't the uh, World Economic Forum in Jordan this year? No, it's always in. It's almost always in Davos. Davos, Switzerland. Okay, that's where it was. Yeah. There's something when, else in. Jordan. When Robert comes to visit the offices, usually it's us that has some hot new camera or lens or a giant multi-gigapixel print we just put up or something. This time, Robert showed up with the good stuff with that 3D camera. We were blown away. Yeah. yeah. The audio. Yeah. That's the audio off through the speaker. What's that? Well, well, hey, speaking of speaking of Trey Rackley, no, because he'll get echoed. All right. Speaking of Trey Ratcliffe's uh, comment on the on the light stuff he's going to do with it, uh, Trey and Tom did a pretty uh, hosted a pretty large photo walk down there in Los Angeles on Sunday, right, Karen? Yes, they did, and it was fantastic. Yeah, tell yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was um, God, it was really really fun. Everybody gathered early, and you know, a lot of us got to meet each other who'd been talking on Google Plus and. That was really fun. Hugs all around for everyone. And then uh, it was the first day Trey and Tom were shooting their show. So they uh -huh. showed up with a camera crew and the big boom mic and uh, the video hey, guys. And Trey, Trey told me he has a really cool red camera. Is that true? He didn't have it with him. Oh, he's, he's holding he out. He does, on Robert, it. but he never uses it. It was a terrible mistake. Why is it a mistake? <laughs> Well, because it's one of those things where you think, you know, this camera looks fantastic. It's going to do everything I want it to do. He, but he bought it, and you know, maybe I'm, you know, I'm speaking for him here. I'm putting words in his mouth, whatever. But I never see him use it. He never posts images from it. He never takes it anywhere. Well, what's, he, it, what's it for? He told me it's for a secret project, and I thought that's yeah. What he were... told me that too. Another secret project. Another secret project. You know, the, a few people who shoot the red cameras told me they're really buggy and, and that might, yeah. uh, that they need to be rebooted and they stop recording sometimes and so that might uh, really drive him nuts because uh, when, that, when that kind of stuff happens, <laughs> when that stuff kind of, it happens, it really causes you to not have faith in your equipment. I'm, you know, I used to use a 5D Mark II for video all the time and I burned out the uh, audio chip in my car because I, I had... <laughs> had an external microphone and I plugged it in and I don't know, I dropped it or something. <laughs> but the audio card got screwed up and it wasn't recording audio and it would it destroyed a couple of interviews. I sent it in the shop and I came back and I did it again. You know, and then I just gave up you on it. I, it. I, uh, well no I didn't drop it the second time. <laughs> and that's why I bought I bought a, a new camera because I just you have to trust your tools. If your tools burn you when you're doing this kind of work, you just say, screw it, it's not worth the, the, 
pain, I'll go back to tools that I know work and I'll keep using those. So Karen, can you give us an insight into the Tom and Trey show? What was that like? Were they, uh, were they talking to the cameras? Were they ignoring them? What sort of setup was it? Well, it was, it was uh, <clears throat> mostly <laughs> they had to do their entrance twice. I remember that, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious having, you know, worked in television. It was funny to see them <laughs> after retake, and I was glad it was them and not me for a change. But um, it was, you know, they mostly just kind of did what they do, and the uh, they were mic'd and they had the boom, so, you know, I couldn't, they were just talking normal, so we, I didn't really know what they were saying. But I think they were just doing the kind of the reality show type of this is a photo walk and this is what we do, and they meet people and take shots and explain to people what's going on, and except for the part where Jessica Ambats flew over in a helicopter yeah. and videoed. That was different. <laughs> and are they going to call it true bromance? You know, I don't know. I think that should be our personal working title for it. Myself. Mm, yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. So were, there, were there any fist fights during the photo walk? A few, you know, nothing major. <laughs> that was just you, Mike. You know, cow. There were no fist fights. Everybody, it was like a love fest. Are you kidding? What was the total number? What was the what was the actual? Did yeah. anybody get an actual count? I heard. I mean, I don't know for sure if this is true. I saw someone say something about 150. I don't know. I suppose we could sit there and count that picture. Um, count. Man, well, I thought there was more than that. Well, there was a group. Apparently, so I was hanging out with Trey yesterday, and there was a the group, the main group that the uh, main photo was taken from. But then I guess on the other side of some peers, Brian Rose had said that there's another group. So. It would have been an even bigger group, I guess, in this photo, but there was just kind of discombobulated a bit. I didn't realize. Yeah, I think maybe some people met on the other side because it, yeah. it was a little hard to... There was a rival photo walk on the other side of the piece. There was a rival photo <laughs> walk. <laughs> you know, oh, my he, goodness. he did the... Last year, he did the Guinness record-setting photo walk at South by Southwest, and I thought this one must have beat that, but mm -hmm. I guess not. The Stanford, yeah. one, the Stanford one came close. The Stanford one did come close, but then we have the Austin one coming up, mm -hmm. and we do we do have the world record setting people. Uh, Trey said with like official little like yellow jackets, blazers, coming in. They're going to count everyone, and we already have the one think, that's for this year, right? Yeah, and we already have like 400 people RSVP'd on Schemer. Wow, so, I love that. Yeah, so it, I think it's going to be huge. That is going to be wild. Yeah. I'm going to be there. When, when is that again? Uh, I think it's March 10th. Yeah, Saturday, March 10th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeez, Saturday, I'm March busy. 10th. What time? Lotus, you did that last year in Austin at South by Southwest with Trey. Yeah, I did. I got to be a part of that uh, Guinness record one. It was really cool. What What time is that? I'm not sure. I could double. Let me. I can check on some posts and then I'll. Uh, what are you doing? That. Hate. <laughs> I heard at one point. Now I can't remember. I'm glad you're checking. Uh, <laughs> Robert, certainly whatever you're doing can't be as important as the world records photo walk. Uh, I think you should be here, Robert. You know, uh, there's 500 startups, and i got to be involved in startups. So work calls. Plus, there's the food spotting event, which they, they always serve great food at their event. Really and, yeah, I, I, Rocky just saw my calendar for Friday night at South by Southwest. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like uh-oh, we have too many parties. And then we have yeah. – uh, we have – Private tickets to see Third Eye Blind, Third Eye Blind in the in the Austin City Limits uh, <laughs> auditorium. So there's lots of fun things to do in Austin. Believe me. Well, well spe <laughs> speaking of, you know, speaking of South by Southwest, you're going to take a lot of pictures there, and when you come back and and store them on your hard drive, you're going to have to save them someplace, right? Yeah, and I need one of those new Drovos, by the way. <laughs> oh, there Drovo. Then glad you brought that up, Robert. There they are, Drovo who is uh, one of our wonderful sponsors here tonight. Uh, uh, Drobo is a great place if you need to back up your images, and that means everybody. Uh, it's a great I have one. You have one? Mm-hmm. How, how do you like it, Karen? Love it. I mean, I can even change oh. the hard drive, and that's saying something. <laughs> well, they're pretty easy. That's what I've always found. You plug and play. You just uh, If a hard drive goes bad, I've had a couple go bad over the years. Yep. You just pop one out, pop a new one in. It heals itself, and... Uh, and they're great for photographers because unlike a lot of data, well, I mean, I guess all data is important, but photographs are super important. Yeah, and it's also hard to back up all that stuff to Dropbox and other places unless you want to pay a lot of money and wait for it to upload a lot of places. It is. It is. Hey, Rocky. Do you, 
Do man, you have... I better get my name on a cocktail napkin in a second here. <laughs> <laughs> She's jealous, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, Natalie. <laughs> there are some good there are some good cloud services out there. I use Mosey for a while, but you know, when you shoot as much as I do, it just it, it starts to get too expensive and Mosey raise their prices. Well, and it's worse if you shoot video on these new five D Mark Three yeah. and Mark Twos. By the way, any, has anybody seen a Mark III yet? Has Trey gotten one of those yet? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, funny that, it's funny that you bring that up because that is actually our next story. Oh, cool. But anyways, yeah, the, the Drobos are fun. We, Rocky and I used to use those. Have, have they gotten quieter? Because I, I need a new one, and uh, they were pretty noisy when I used them three years ago. Yay. Hold on, hold on. Uh, i got I to screenshot oh, that. She All right, wants to screenshot it. All right, bring it back, bring it back. All right, one, two, three. Thank you. Right, cool. um, so really quick, the uh, the schemer Trey Radcliffe photo walk is at 2 p.m. on the 10th. And it's I'm, unfortunately, I'm speaking right there, but I will put it on the calendar. So hey, Robert, your question about the noise on the Drobo, there's one right now that's sitting uh, about three inches from the mic on my MacBook Pro. That's pretty good. That's yeah, a lot quieter than they used to be. Yeah, they're, 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 they're silent, silent now. So they're... Dude. So do they, do they also have different sizes of them? Because I haven't looked into them for three years. They do. So. They do, yeah. You can get four. The, the, the cheapest one, the basic one, that says four bays. You can get one with five bays. They've got some with even more. So the, the reason you want a Drobo is if it, you put four different hard drives in these things, and it automatically spreads your data across all four. And that way if one of the drives dies, your data is all backed up. Yeah. Your data is still safe. Right? I think you, you can't lose two drives, can you? You can. You can you lose can. two. Yeah. It depends how much data you've filled in, but uh, it, it warns you. It has little lights on the front. It's really it well fine. Yeah, I, I, I love them. I've got five of them. So. <laughs> it's, uh, I, and I've had drives fail, and you pop it out and put it in. It takes, takes quite a few hours to reheal, but, it's, uh, but they're great. So we're, we're glad to have them as a sponsor and always like mentioning them. They, they still don't have a Thunderbolt version, though, right? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. Yeah. But, but I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if you see there's that. A, there's a competitor that has a Thunderbolt, but they're too grand for the, the drive, and it's a little expensive. Yeah, that's the one. They sell it in the Apple Store, and yeah. Ray actually bought one. Those, those, are, those are really nice, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're quite expensive compared to, uh, you know, Drobo has done a couple of sales now uh, where they've had them as cheap as 199 bucks. So Thomas, so. how do you hook them together? How do you, do you daisy chain them? Yeah. Well, they're FireWire 800, and so yeah, you can just daisy chain them indefinitely with FireWire 800. So you just well, I, I think FireWire can FireWire have ten devices? Fire, chain, eight. Eight. Oh, eight. Okay, not eight. indefinitely. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Eight. And so I think I USB. <clears throat> do they have a USB model too, or is it just FireWire? Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. use FireWire or USB. It's got both options on the Drobo. Well, they have the uh, they have an iSCSI option too, which, in my opinion, is the coolest option. Well, the fastest for sure, yeah, that too. And you can stash it like somewhere else in your house or your office or something. It doesn't need to be right next to your computer. Anywhere you have Ethernet, which is pretty appealing to me, and you can then have as many as you want because it's just Ethernet. Yeah. yeah. So, Thomas, I'm, I'm going to have to get out of here. Is there anything else that we should cover tonight? Well, we should talk about the 5D Mark III. Yeah. What, you guys seen the rumors on that and the specs, and what do you think? I haven't seen any of the specs, but everybody at Canon keeps smiling at me every time I ask them to, to leak something. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, well, when they don't ask you, then you do. <laughs> apparently, they're announcing it on Friday. Oh. Uh, that's the Great. rumor. Great. That's so the this rumor. is. So I'm gonna have to buy an iPad 3 and a Canon 5D Mark 3. My wife is gonna be thrilled with the gadget budget this quarter. I <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, you know, well, I don't know. You know, I have a question. You have some money saved. When these new cameras come out, do you guys get the first model, or do you wait for all the kinks uh, to get worked out and then buy it? Uh, Thomas and I are going to be first in line, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Oh, come on, Thomas. I don't know. <laughs> you're going to be. You're going to be itching. Your finger is going to be over B&H Photo, going, "Where's that link? Where's that link?" <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, Ro Ro Robert and I spent the night in the iPhone line for the very first one and with Dawn also. Remember that? Yep. That was fun. We're all kind of gadget. We're all kind of gadget geeks. So it was. Uh, sometimes it's worth waiting. But I, you know, I don't know though, Robert. I'm not totally sold on at least the initial specs that I've seen. 
Um, I mean, it does have some cool. So supposedly, it's got some cool. What are you gonna switch to Nikon now or what? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I just don't know if it's got. I mean, it's 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 a little bit more. It's got the autofocus, more autofocus points. It's got two cards instead of one card. But you know, if I were a wedding photographer, I'd care about that. But I don't really care so much about two cards. Well, two we'll cards. have to see. Thomas, I, I what do you want it to have? I, well, I would love for it to have geotagging, automatic mm -hmm. geotagging built in, and I don't think it's going to You know why happen. that's unlikely, don't you? B battery life. Well, not actually that, because if you think about it, the batteries in those bigger models are actually pretty hefty to start with. The problem is the shielding in the body, that if you've got a metal body, it's very hard to get radio in and out of it, and that's why you don't see wide find GPS built into pro bodies and semi-pro bodies. And that's why you can put it in a cheaper consumer body or a, a camera phone because it's got a plastic shell for the signal to get in and out. So if they they can put radio in it, but they would have to compromise the integrity. So I hope, I really hope that they put a GPS in it. But if you know if they do, then there's going to have to be a little hole somewhere for it. Yeah. The other thing that I really that I really drives me crazy about my current 5D. Mark II is the is the dust on the sensor, and I don't know how you solve that problem. Maybe you know better than I do, Gordon. But yeah, uh, you you switch to micro four thirds. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. and you don't switch lenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you never take the lens off. <laughs> well, that's not going to work for me. But uh, <laughs> well, maybe and I'd maybe it's a lot better than the 5D Mark One. The 5D yeah. model was horrendous for that. Yeah, we, pre Thomas, we forget just how bad that was. Thomas, maybe yeah. what you do is you don't leave your backpack open with all the lenses butt up uncovered in the middle of a field. I don't know. It's just a thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get a lot of abuse for that. <laughs> for, you know, I, I don't take as, as pristine care of my uh, gear as Trey Ratcliffe does, but... Uh, you know, it drives me crazy. I, I'm at the point now where I just I just send it into Canon about once every uh, two months and have them clean it. I, I've already had this in, in uh, I was shooting an Audi, and I put this thing out, out of the window, and uh, all this muddy water splashed all over this thing and made it all wet. It was great. <laughs> so, Robert, you have 3D dirt then on your image. Is this dust mark actually coming out? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was I, terrible. I wiped, it, I wiped it off with my T-shirt and went back to shooting, man. It was great. Right <laughs> Rocky, when I, Rocky kills me. It kills me when I do shit like that with his camera equipment. <laughs> well, 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 speaking of... why I don't let him use it. Yeah, he, he makes me buy my own equipment. He doesn't let me take out his equipment. <laughs> Well, speaking of the 5D, uh, the Canon 5D, which Mark II, which is what I currently shoot with and I love, uh, we do have another sponsor for the show, and uh, I see I see their logo on a red hat. Yeah. Uh, over there in the corner uh, with uh, Mr. Don McCaskill. Woo! Uh, there he is. Um, and thanks to Smug Mug, uh, we have our a very very fun giveaway that we're giving away next week. We're talking about it this week, but we're going to actually give it away next week. And uh, is that this, is... Is this my old camera with the bad audio uh, card? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is not. <laughs> That's a collector's item. So people yeah. probably would want it. Probably, yes. you know. Robert, if you find that, you could probably sell it on eBay for $5,000. I doubt, I, I doubt I'm that. <laughs> Gary yeah. Action sign it first. <laughs> So Smug Mug is, uh, is going to give away uh, on the show here uh, with us uh, Canon 5D Mark II next week. So the question is, uh, how do you win this thing? And uh, I'm sure everybody wants one of these. That's what I shoot with. It's an awesome camera. And uh, what we're going to do next week uh, is we're going to have a trivia question for people that are listening at the end of the show. And somebody in the chat room... Whoever in the chat room gets the answer first is going to win the camera. But, but the caveat is you have to be following uh, Smug Mug on Google+. So before the show, uh, just add them, follow them if you're not already. I'm sure, I know I am. I'm sure most people watching the show is. And uh, we're going to ask a trivia question, and whoever comes up with the correct answer first will win the Canon 5D Mark II live. Hey, is it going to be? Is it going to be photography trivia? Like you know, it is. So it can be something like if you're not who who said the the words if you're not close enough your photo or if your photos aren't good enough you're not close enough that kind of thing. That's good. How did you know, Robert? 
Uh, that was the exact uh, question. We were gonna, no, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> that's, too, that's too easy. You can Google that one pretty fast. You gotta right. make one. You gotta make one that you have to actually work to Google. You know. Yes, it's gonna. No, it's gonna be a scavenger hunt. Who can get the first photograph of Robert Scoble at the Ritz Carlton at Half Moon Bay drinking? <laughs> that's that's also pretty easy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll strap a GoPro to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, you know, thank you, Don, to you and Smug Mug. It's it, such wonderful sponsors for the show each week. And hey, no problem. It's our pleasure. We love we love photography. We love this show. We love what you guys are doing. It's awesome. Smug Mug rocks. They do. We love Smug Mug. It's a great place to sell your prints. It's a great place to uh, set up a store and not just prints, so, you know, all kinds of different things, merchandise and uh, T-shirts and mugs. I sold a T-shirt the other day. Someone. Yeah, there was uh, some big news that went out via email this week that we or today that we uh, separate from Camera Awesome. It was a big day for us. Um, we announced last week at WPPI that uh, Smug Mug is integrated with WHCC now, uh, White House Custom Color. So we have uh, right. we have another lab. So we're up to three high end labs to choose from now. So uh, that's so, great. Well, I tell you, Don, I, I love uh, Bay Photo. That you guys have them. I mean, they do such great work, you know. They, they are stupendous. I yeah. love Bay. They I've are been using Bay for more than a decade. Yeah, and you know you can send your work there as a photographer, and you know it's going to be handled right. You know it's going to look great when people buy the prints. And <clears throat> the great thing about Smug Mug is they give photographers 85% of the markup on your prints, which is just unheard of. By the way, it, if you guys ever get a chance to go visit Smug Mug's headquarters, I think you're in Mountain View, California, right? Yep. You, they, have, they have the coolest panoramic photography on all their walls. Trey Ratcliffe has a photo there. and I, I have some video I shot when I was out there, and I'll post it hopefully this weekend. But you guys got to go see it because uh, your father and you go out and shoot these multi-image well, tell us a little bit about what these images are. I think you got one behind you on the cat, above the cat. They're the cool. Uh, I do. Let me see if I can get this one a little closer. This is my current favorite, which is why it's in my office. Um, you see how long the USB here is. Sorry for the blurry, shaky cam. Um, so this is. Let me see Beautiful. if I can aim it right and hold it steady enough there. Do we have enough resolution? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's an HDR multi-shot. And sorry, I'm holding this sort of backwards, so I'm I'm jiggling it around when I shouldn't be. There we go, almost. Um, anyway, it's a, a multi-resolution HDR shot from the uh, from the uh, National Air and Science Museum in Washington D.C. Um, and mm -hmm. it is gorgeous, stupendous. I don't know exactly what the megapixel count is there, but it's probably above a gigapixel, I would guess. Um, it's enough shots, uh, and it's got you know the Blackbird and the space shuttle in there on one side, and tons of World War II classics on the other, and and it's printed uh, from Bay Photo on metal, and so in person it's gorgeous. It's amazing looking in person, um, but this one is tiny compared to the ones you're talking about, Robert, as you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys have one photo of uh, what Prague. Yeah, it goes down your entire hallway. I mean, it's probably what fifty feet long. At least fifty feet long. Yep. It's uh, awesome, and it's so it has such detail. You can walk straight up to the print and see like people in the print. How, you guys shoot that with what uh, multi 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 images with a Canon 5D set up really well. Yeah. You guys have, are are so practiced at it and, and have such. Uh, good timing with that stuff, and and you go out and sh your dad told me he, he shot that image, tried to shoot that image for what a week on, on end or yeah. something. Yeah, like so he's uh, so he's incredibly good at it. I wish I could take some of the credit. These are all his shots, um, other than I get to hang one on my walls, which is great. Um, but we uh, we go out and and uh, and shoot these things, and they are dozens, if not hundreds, of shots. Um, at the full resolution of a 5D Mark II, um, and then very carefully stitched together. Uh, and as you can imagine, when you're shooting 100 shots or more, uh, stuff changes. Like the light isn't exactly right and all this sort of stuff. One of the shots, the one across San Francisco Bay that captures San Francisco from the Bay Bridge on the left all the way over to the Golden Gate Bridge at sunset, uh, we, I think he shot that 22 times before he finally got it just right. 
with huge shot, uh, huge number of exposures every single time there. Um, because it turned out there were all kinds of things that nobody in the photography community knew how to get around, like the thermals coming off the water that was causing all the lights to flicker and stuff over time. So we had to, not only did he have to shoot tons of shots, but he had to leave the shutter open for a very long period of time just to get a steady, sharp enough shot, not because of normal tripod or camera vibration, but because the air was vibrating across the bay. It was crazy. So, yeah. They're amazing. Those shots? They yeah, they're, they're really cool. Now, Rocky just asked, do you guys sell those shots? But Because they're pretty expensive to print. Some of those shots probably cost five to something thousand dollars just to print, right? Uh, you know, I don't know exactly how much they cost to print. Uh, I think they are, I think there are some uh, friends of ours that have printed some of them big for their own lobbies at their own companies and things like that. Um, I think we're certainly open to letting other people print them, um, probably at no cost, um, but it is a large amount of expense because they are so big to, to, uh, to print them, so it's probably mostly companies that have that sort of That's expense. That's really cool they should post that there yeah. because I know people would d take that. Yeah. Do you, do you let people just come in your headquarters and look around? Or we, we have frequent visitors. Uh, we do have a, as you know, we have a, we have a chef and she makes an amazing, amazing meals for us. So we often have customers come by and get fed and see all the shots and hang out. And, and we like to suck their brain dry for what we can do better on our products, of course. So it's a win-win for both, uh, both parties. We love visitors. Cool. It's, it's definitely one of the better headquarters to see in Silicon Valley because it's very unique. You, you can't see this kind of photography even in a museum. It's really, really spectacular. Thanks. By the way, Don, Robert wouldn't let me edit that last interview we did. <laughs> <laughs> so if it sucks, it's his fault. <laughs> oh, of course it doesn't suck. I mean, that's one of the great things about a, a Robert interview is that it's the real deal. This isn't spin or something. I mean, I caught a little flack for, for the way I talked about competitive research, and, you know, maybe I deserved it. Um, I, 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 I like stuff to be real. Yeah. Hey, Robert, what, what other technology out there related to photography are you seeing that is interesting to you right now? Uh, not too much. I mean, I, we're all waiting for the Canon 5D Mark III. The Lytro t just shipped today, so I'm, I'm still looking forward to playing with that and understanding it more. Um, I'm into 3D. I, I, you know, no, very few other people are, but when I went to the uh, Consumer Electronics Show and I saw these new OLED screens, the screens are so stunning, and they're so far ahead of what we have in our homes today that when you see, even because even though you are forced to wear glasses with these screens, the 3D is just so in your face and just so magical. It's like looking into a window that I, it really got me excited by 3D, and I, so I'm playing a lot uh, around with that. That's one reason I'm still fairly bullish on uh, the Lytro, because it's a, a good 3D camera in addition to doing all the other stuff. And I'm playing around with uh, you know, 3D video and trying to understand it and, and look at the uh, editing suites and how to edit it. GoPro has 3D video cameras that I'm playing with, and nobody else is, which I think is fun. You know, it's, it, like Don and, and his dad, you know, doing these photos that very few other people in the world are trying to do, these big, huge, mega, gigapixel photos, I want to do stuff that, uh, you know, Trey Ratcliffe or Thomas Hockett isn't doing. And I think that's innovation in of its, uh, its own. Well, that's great. Well, do we have oh, any... Rocky. Rocky has to get home, so... Yeah, you're going to have to blow out of here? Yeah, sorry, man. I, uh, we had a long day today. Yeah, I know. Um, hey, me too. <laughs> yeah, you launched a product. Yeah, this is a big deal for us today. We've never done anything quite like this. So, Don, was it pretty? Was it pretty well received out there? It seemed like it was. Uh, Man, it is. Yeah, off the charts, well received. Yeah, um, that's great. It's awesome. It's an awesome, awesome app. I was playing and with it today. I love it. You should go. I mean, it's it's almost comical how lopsided like the star chart on the App Store is. You should go take a look when you get a chance and see how many five-star reviews we have versus all the other stars. It's we. I love it. It warms my heart. But it is sort of funny the way the distribution is so lopsided. Yeah, not not bad for being out, what, less than 24 hours now? Or has it been out 24 hours yet? Ah, uh, man. Um, you know, it, it sort of, as, as poor Robert found out, it sort of slipped out a little early and sort of landed at some of the App Stores, but not all of them. So we got... 
we got flooded with emails all night saying, hey, I've been searching for Camera Awesome and it's not coming up because who knows what servers it was on at Apple and everything. So technically, 6 a.m. this morning is when we knew it was everywhere and we started like telling people, but um, but some people managed to find it yesterday when, yeah. when the Wall Street Journal published. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, Thomas, I'm out of here. Thank you so much. This was a great show. Yeah, Hi, thanks Robert. for being on the show. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do the questions from the uh, chat room without you, but uh, we understand you got to get, get running. No problem. Thank you very much. Yep. See you, Robert. 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 All right. Bye. We'll see you again soon. Yeah. Who's oh. going to play Robert during the question and answer period? I vote for Gordon. I, I look alike him. I can oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does. The part the part of Robert, it's like in the theater when they say the part of Robert's double tonight will be played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, before any other questions, can I jump in and ask Don a question? Yeah. Cool, Don. I don't know yeah. whether this is supported yet on Smugbug, but you know how you let photographers sell their own prints, obviously their own yep. uh, their own stuff. Do you let photographers set up an affiliate program so that I can sell? their prints and get a bit of commission? Uh, we do not. Um, is that something you, you could, because I speak to a lot of photographers who would, uh, take great pictures, but not a lot of people are seeing them and they say, hey, you should put them on your site or something. I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool, but you know, I, I'd like to make a bit of cash as well. And affiliate programs are a great way of doing that. And, and if you could set it up in a way that they can set whatever percentage they want, you know, maybe they'll do 5%, 10%, 50%, whatever they, they can set it up to whatever they want, and then other people will start selling their prints so everyone wins. I think that would be a real killer feature. I'd love to see that. That sounds like a fabulous idea. Why don't we uh, build it for you? Cool. Like Good. <laughs> uh, so uh, why don't you follow up with me and we'll, I mean, I, I've never really thought about it before, um, but that's, typical for features and stuff we do at Spunk Mug. It's typically a customer that comes to us and says, hey, why don't you do X? And we say, wow, that sounds great. This is one of those cases. It sounds great. Tell me more, and, uh, and uh, we'll see if we can build it for you. Cool. That sounds like a great idea. Great way to get more print sales out there, and uh, uh, affiliate programs are terrific. Anything to help photographers. I mean, that's, that's our business. So That's great. Well, good idea, Gordon. Well, I, I think what we're going to do here, guys, now is because these Hangouts can only be uh, an hour and a half, or, or otherwise I can't trim them on YouTube, we are going to uh, end this Hangout, but I'm going to invite everybody here right back in a new Hangout in two minutes. And the new Hangout, the new hangout won't be recorded, it won't be part of the show, but it will be a uh, question and answer question and answer and broadcast live for the chat room. Great. All right, so look at look at my stream in two minutes. And uh, other than that, thanks to everybody for the show tonight. It was a terrific time, and uh, I had a great time, and it was great seeing Robert and Don hearing so much about your great new app and everything else. So thank you to everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having us. And we'll see you next week when we are going to give away that Canon 5D Mark II. And... Who do we have on our show, Lotus? We have Vivian Goutois. We do. The, the lovely Vivian Goutois from New York who does some amazing, amazing work. So, yeah. um, so we will, um, we're going to restart the show now. So come right back. Don't go anywhere. And uh, we'll keep going. So see you all in a few minutes. Bye. Bye. Bye.